Hey guys, welcome. I'm going to be showing you how to make hot pepper jelly with green pepper, sugar, and apple cider vinegar, so stick with me. Okay guys, so basically what you're going to need for this recipe is two green chilies. You can use green chilies or you can use red chilies. You can use one bell pepper or one spicy pepper, depending on how you like it. But today I'm using two pretty fairly big green chili peppers. And then you're going to need some apple cider vinegar. I use the Bragg's apple cider vinegar. I love this one. It's super tangy and sour. So this is the one I like to use. And you're gonna use one half cup of apple cider vinegar to two chilies. Okay, you're also gonna need three fourths cup of white sugar. That's a lot of sugar. This is not a diet food, guys. This is jam or jelly. It's sweet, it's got a lot of sugar. You're gonna need three fourths cup of sugar to every two chilies that you use. Now the other thing that we're gonna need is pectin. So here I've got the original pectin. It's the one you're gonna wanna use and we're gonna use one fourth box of this pectin. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna make this. Your first thing you're gonna do is wash and dry your peppers, which I've already done. And you're gonna cut off the stems. You're gonna discard these stems. And then you're gonna dice these super ultra fine. Nobody wants a big chunk of hot pepper in their mouth. You wanna dice this super fine so that it distributes all the way through your jam. So I'm gonna cut these up. I leave the seeds in mine because my husband likes his super, super spicy. So leave the seeds in if you want it hot. Take them out if you want it a little less hot. So I'm gonna chop these up and I'll bring you guys back. Now, some people use gloves for this. I like to live on the wild side. I don't use gloves. I don't wear a face mask. I don't do anything like that. I just like grit through it and deal with it, but you can totally use gloves. Protect yourself in any way that you need. <laughs> Definitely when you're done with this, guys, wash this cutting board really well and wash your hands and don't touch your eyes. I mean, you'd think that was common sense, but don't scratch your nose, don't scratch your face, don't touch your eyeballs. Don't do anything like that after touching these. We're also gonna cook these, um, which can cause some hot pepper air to form, which is really bad. So you also might not wanna can these around small children. Wait until they're uh, napping and out of the room before you do this they can be super sensitive to peppers. Okay, so this is all diced up. Now we're gonna put these in a pot. Okay guys, I got my pot over high heat and I'm gonna go ahead and add my apple cider vinegar. Next, you're gonna go ahead and add the sugar. And then I've got my three little jars here, all sanitized. They've all been washed in mild soap and boiled, as well as my three lids are all cleaned up. So then I'm gonna go ahead and add these into my pot. Okay guys, now your goal here is to bring this to a boil and dissolve the sugar into the vinegar completely. Once that comes to a boil, you put in your one fourth uh, package of pectin and you let it come to a boil again, boil it for a minute or even less than a minute and then you're ready to can your jars. Okay guys, I'm at a full boil. So here's my one fourth of a package of pectin here and there's my rolling boil. Go ahead and put that in and then get stirring. And you're gonna take a look at your uh, timer there. Keep an eye on it and you're gonna stir this up for about one minute without letting it boil over. So if you've gotta adjust, then go ahead and adjust that temperature so that you don't boil over. But your cooking time is less than a minute in here. 
and I'm using a wooden spoon that has that curve so I can get all around the edges. You don't want any of that sugar or anything in the bottom. You want everything fully incorporated. And of course, have your canner on in the back there. Have that ready and boiling so that when you're ready to pop these jars in to begin processing, they can go right in. And we're gonna process these jars for five minutes time just to get a good seal. So you're gonna turn off the heat. Go ahead and remove your spoon. And then I'm gonna go right with this into my glass container here. It looks very liquidy right now, but no worries. That is gonna set right up with the pectin. Okay, so here is your jam. And this is nice to work with this Pyrex um, glass measuring container because it withstands heat changes really fast and it also has a measuring thing so you can see how much you've made. So this recipe made approximately a little over eight ounces or one cup of jam. Um, it's a small batch, it's just for this weekend for a cookout that we're going to be having. So I expect this all to be eaten this weekend. So this one cup, yeah, and it has a nice little pour spout right there so you can go ahead and divvy it out. So I'll get you set right up here. So let's see. I'm gonna pour a little bit in each one to get the peppers evenly distributed first. Now the reason I like working with these little itty bitty jars is because if you're having a party you can set them in multiple places so people don't have to hog on the dip and all be congregating around one area. Also you can send these home with people so if someone really likes it they can have their own mini jar to go home with. It's an easy size to give away to people. So you're going to tighten on that cap. Use a towel to protect your hands. It'll be very hot. There we go. Okay, now these are ready to go in to your canner for five minutes. Okay, they're in my canner and we've got five minutes on the timer and I'll bring you guys back when they're all pulled out. Hey guys, so here they are. They are all done. They're nice and jiggly and setting up. They will continue to firm until they're completely cool and then there'll be a nice, whoop, there goes one. When you hear that pop, it means that seal is pulling in there and now you have an airtight seal. So that's the pop that you should hear as they begin to cool down. And you, of course, want to make sure that all your seals work. You want to make sure they all pop in. That means it's good. If one doesn't pop in, just put it in the fridge, use it within a week, and you're fine. If they all pop, then they can go in the cabinet for as long as you shall choose, a year at max, and use them up. So there's a lot of great recipes of ways that you can use this jelly. And I'll put some of them over here on the screen. But people like to glaze meats with it because it's hot and sweet. So they glaze tenderloins and hams and things with that. Another favorite is for people to put it over a cream cheese block and bake it and then serve it with crackers at a party. So you get sweet, you get spicy, and you get to have that creamy cream cheese. So that's a really great dip for parties. Uh, people also use this just to dip with chips, my husband's favorite way is to get those big, crusty, salty pretzels and dip it in hot pepper jelly. That's one of his favorites, so he loves it that way. 
Um, there's so many different ways you can use it. It's really endless. So I will put some of those, like I said, up there and let me know down below, guys, do you enjoy this recipe? Do you eat hot pepper jelly? Is it something that you like or you've always had or you've never heard of before? And let me know what type of canning recipes you wanna see in the future. What kind of stuff do you wanna see? I'm interested in doing all kinds of videos on food preservation, like canning, curing, salting, I mean, even dehydrating. So anything you guys wanna see, let me know. Give me a like, subscribe, and comment on this video, and you guys have a great day.